And welcome back. One week from today, the Senate Judiciary Committee, they'll begin its confirmation hearings for President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. They are pushing ahead, even though two Republicans on the panel, Mike Lee and Tom Tillis, have both tested positive. Both men attended that Rose Garden ceremony where the president announced the pick. And that event, well, it's turned into a super spreader with at least nine people who are there now testing positive. I want to bring in my next guest. He's got a really interesting perspective on this. A man who served on the Senate Judiciary Committee with Joe Biden, Dennis DeConcini. He's a former Democratic senator from Arizona. Senator, I'm curious because uh, for a lot of us, we look and we shake our heads, but you used to call that chamber home. Uh, Joe Biden isn't a name to you. He was a former colleague of yours. Do you even recognize the Washington of today from the one you served in? And are you afraid literally for democracy? Well, you know, it's so different, uh, Rich, that, that it's hard to believe. And, of course, I know Joe Biden very well, and I'm partial in, in, in this election for obvious reasons. I served with him for 18 years and on the Judiciary Committee with him for 18 years. And uh, it is, uh, I, I has, have to say, d disturbing. And uh, this president has caused uh, such turmoil and such a division. There's never been anything like this president who acts as though he... He is above the law. See, maybe because um, uh, I've been around New York for a long time, I knew who Donald Trump was and what he was capable of. But what I've been so wrong is I never thought DOJ could have been as co-opted as they become under Barr. I never thought a lot of Republican institutionalists would have ever let Trump go to the degrees that he has and pervert the law in the process. Um, are you surprised by people you know that they haven't drawn a line in the sand? I mean, the former senator from Arizona, Senator Flake, at least, I'll give him credit. He put his back up and he at least spoke up. But I can count on one hand the amount of Republicans who've done this. Lindsey Graham, who you know, I don't even recognize him anymore. Uh, they're going to have a tough time when history does an accounting of this, aren't they? That they aided and abetted somebody who's doing such real damage in real time to this country. I, I agree, Rich. It's, it's just quite phenomenal to me. I, I'm, um, you know, Lindsey Graham, I know him, and he's a fine man. And Mitch McConnell was there. He came when I came. He was a, a wonderful Southern gentleman. We worked on um, uh, legislation for children, the National Center for Missing Exploited Children, and it has become so toxic. Uh, it is just difficult to, to, to see. And you see people who do stand up, like Romney and uh, Flake, and uh, you see how they get bullied. And I think, uh, I don't know, but I just think senators are just a little afraid of him. It's very disappointing because when I was there, you know, and Barr was the attorney general was there, he was so well respected and he used to appear before the uh, Judiciary Committee. He was a, just considered a, a, a fine attorney with uh, practice and understood what the job was as attorney general. But it's just hard to see how he could, could satisfy himself to become the lawyer for the president of the United States, which, as you know, is just not the job of the attorney general. I believe we're going to have to make a choice. And, uh, you know, we see the polls um, hypothetically, if, if it kind of holds till Election Day, anyone who believes that the president will go quietly, I don't think has been paying any attention. And at a certain point, if he decides that he's going to go to certain states like Nevada and say, you know what, uh, the election's a fraud. I want you guys, the state legislature, to appoint electors, um, and then they'll decide who wins. Or I'm going to bring in the National Guard here and no more counting of the ballots because I declared that there was widespread fraud, even though there won't be evidence. When that happens, somebody, I, I keep waiting for it, on the Republican side, say, that's a bridge too far. I, I can't go there. At the end of the day, the democracy is more important than one man, even if I get angry tweets my way. But I keep waiting for that day to happen. And, and yes, there's isolated instance. You mentioned Mitt Romney, the late Senator John McCain, certainly pushed back when he was with us. But I keep waiting for the other ones, even guys retiring that have nothing to lose. And, and, I, keep, and I keep waiting. Do you think it'll happen in November if the president no. does what I fully believe he's capable of doing? I think a couple of things, Rich. Uh, number one, if it is an overwhelming victory for Biden, where it, you know, even going to Nevada or going to Texas would not make the difference. And that's what would be very important, because then even Trump may 
realize he just cannot hang on. But if it is within, you know, a couple of dozen electoral votes or something, he's very much likely to do that, likely to do that. And uh, at that time, the election will be over from the standpoint of senators who are up, Republican senators who have been reelected or not reelected. And if they're reelected, like Lindsey Graham, he might uh, do what his best friend, John McCain, did and speak up about it. But he can't, uh, politically, he can't afford to do that now. And I, I understand that. I'm sorry to see him in that position. Uh, but, uh, and I know he's, he's a Republican, I'm a Democrat, but he, he stood up with McCain and he has a lot of courage. Uh, but unless it is very close as it was with Bush and Gore, uh, I just don't think that's going to happen. If it is, uh, then it is a danger because it very likely they would go to the Supreme Court. And speaking of the Supreme Court and Lindsey Graham, that for a whole nother conversation, what was four years ago and where we are now. But um, Arizona state, you know, extremely well. Uh, if you look at the polls, um, Joe Biden's got better than a fighting chance. Uh, what do you think happens? Uh, is Mark Kelly going to be the next senator at the end? Which way do you think it breaks, blue or red? Well, I think in Arizona, Mark Kelly will will win. He's uh, running strong. He's got all the credentials. And uh, unfortunately, Senator McSally is so vulnerable, as Senator Cinema pointed out, uh, having voted, I don't know what it was, 17 or 18 times to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which included pre-existing uh, diseases uh, being covered. And she's tried to change that, but you can't escape your, your bullying record. Last question. Um, you had a distinguished career in the law, uh, both before and after you left Washington. Uh, if you were a younger man, looking the way Washington is right now and how toxic it is, would you still want to go up to Capitol Hill or would you say thanks but no thanks? You know, Rich, that's really an interesting question because I've thought about that in this last election, 2016 and then 2018. I almost had a, felt like, you know, I'd like to be there. I'd like to participate and, and, and see if I could do something about it. And then I almost slapped myself on the face and said, wait a minute. Dennis, you know, first of all, your, your day is come and gone, but uh, you, would you really be up to it? I like to think I would, but I realize my day is long, long gone, Rich. Well, you had quite a service, and I certainly appreciate you making time for us uh, tonight, Senator. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rich. You do, you do a good job, by the way. Oh, I've been interviewed that. by a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you how you can be a part of our program, particularly if you've struggled with COVID and still struggle with some of the symptoms. Stay with us.